Hi y'all, my name is Mike Peace. Welcome to my shop. I'm passionate about wood turning and I want to help you become a better, safer wood turner. I want to give this shout out to Ross Anderson who suggested this topic of purchasing a first chuck. Let's talk about uh, some of the considerations. I think one of the first ones is, is your uh, chuck size. You know, do you have a mini or a mini chuck in which you might want something more on the order of uh, you know, a smaller smaller chuck like this. These got pin jaws, makes it look a little bit uh, bigger. Uh, or are you? Did you get a full size chuck, 16, 20 inch maybe, in which you want a larger chuck? This is massive. This weighs. This is a uh, Technotool Titan chuck. It weighs over eight pounds, uh, and it's not something you'd want to put on a on a chuck. So the size size does does matter. Uh, the size of the thread on your uh, spindle makes a big difference. Most mini and midi uh, lathes use a one inch by eight threads per inch uh, thread. Most larger chucks, full size, I mean most uh, most full size lathes, uh, 14, 16, 18, 20 inches, generally in the United States they use a one and a quarter by eight threads per inch. Outside the U.S. you might find some that are M th M33 uh, by I think three Three or 3.5. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, it's going to be a different size. Now, the first consideration on that thread size, there's two ways uh, chucks uh, are threaded. Either they're a direct thread, like this, in which the threads are directly cut into the chuck, chuck itself. Um, there's some advantages that generally you're less likely to have run out. Uh, it's generally a, a, tends to be a little bit cheaper. The downsize, if you switch lathes, you can't just simply take out something that most chucks have, which is called a threaded insert. That is something that threads into the body, and depending on the lathe size, you buy a chuck, uh, you buy a chuck insert that matches that spindle size on your on your lathe. Uh, generally, they're fastened a couple of ways. Some of them are threaded, some of them are fastened by set screws. doesn't really much matter which way, I don't think. Uh, and then, if it's threaded, generally it's, that it's secured with a tiny uh, set, set screw. If you happen to have a chuck that's direct threaded, for example, for a mini lathe, and like, like this one, and you move up to a larger lathe, all is not lost, you can simply buy an adapter. Here's an adapter that has one and a quarter that will go on to thread it onto my lathe like so and it, it steps it down to that one inch so I can actually use a smaller chuck on the lathe. You can see now if this was happen to be on a mini lathe that reduces some of your your uh, bed length. Now uh, going in the other direction here's a one and a quarter chuck insert, I could either replace this insert or I happen to have an insert that, that steps this down so I could now just use it with the current insert and use this on a uh, on a mini lathe with a one inch spindle. Now there's there's a couple of other considerations that I'm not sure frankly are all that significant. One is does the chuck have an open back in which you can see the gears and you blow it out uh, periodically to clean it or does it have a closed back in which is sealed in which case it may go for many many years uh, and maybe never depending on how often you use it but sooner or later you may have to take this loose and, to clean it out and and relubricate it. Frankly I don't think there's a big difference I, I don't have a stronghold all my tools are tech, uh, Techni tools but the stronghold by one way is a very nice uh, chuck and it has uh, an open back so I don't think that's a big consideration it's just something to be aware of and it, and it might fall in the area of personal preference. Another consideration is what type of chuck key uh, mechanism does your chuck use? Now the very on the low end of the scale that includes this one uh, it's a very nice chuck it's just a less expensive chuck and it's an old frankly it's an old old chuck, old design, they use what they call Tommy bars like this uh, to tighten. It, it's one of those things, if you, some people love them, some people hate them. Uh, I'm not real enamored with them because I tend to drop these in, in use, but it is a very secure way of doing it. Uh, 
The other type of keys are generally two different types. Some of them use an Allen wrench uh, type of uh, chuck key. Some of them use uh, a gear type of chuck key because that's what chuck uh, uh, calls for. I don't have a big preference uh, one over the other, although I've ha had demonstrators say they like, for example, a Vic Mark because if they get somewhere and they forgot their chuck key, a lot of times you can find the big uh, Allen wrench to, to fit it. I don't think that's a, a serious consideration one way or the other. One other consideration I can't go into any real detail is there's newer chuck designs out on the market that have quick change jaws and the, the, my chucks are not one of them. The chucks are generally considerably more expensive uh, but you just push an indent or twist a button or something and the jaws come right out and you can take another set of jaws and put them right in and it's a very quick change. Uh, that could be a very nice feature uh, and for some people if you're starting out, although my preference is to not have to change the jaws too much by having different size, different size chucks. Uh, there's two types of chucks I'm aware of that have that feature. There's the uh, easy wood uh, chuck and then there's the Technic tool, uh, I believe it's called the Infinity uh, chuck. And for the Technic tool you can retrofit other jaws but it's not a cheap retrofit. You got to buy a different set of uh, glides, and then you have to find uh, you have to buy a set of attachments that go on every set of jaws. So to me, it's just not worth the expense. Another cons another consideration is what type of uh, tenon does the jaw set clamp down on? There's basically two types. There's there's a type that that just uses a pair a a tenon where the walls are parallel, such as the Techna tool, and then it has a tiny little miniature dovetail that you don't cut a groove for that clamps into the wood. There's other types that actually, such as these 35 millimeter jaws, that actually uh, you, you should cut a dovetail for your optimum optimum hold. There are other uh, chucks that where the standard jaws have serrated edges. Now in this case this has a dovetail but down inside here further down uh, there are serrated edges and I'll see if I can't get you a close-up of those. Another consideration is how many different uh, jaw sizes or sets does that manufacturer have? Some of them are very limited. Uh, some uh, there's some, some more inexpensive chucks such as the Barracuda that will come with two or three or four different jaws as part of the set but that's what you're limited to whereas the mainline jaws uh, from the from the first tier manufacturers you generally have lots of choices on on jaws if you got a mini lathe and you you're a hobbyist that might not make much of a, a difference but if you're serious you're turning a lot of different things uh, your needs may change as your as your turning changes and having options is a good thing range of movement is a consideration for, for some people uh, with the Techna tool, your range of motion is generally only about three quarters of an inch from, from being fully tight to maximum uh, opening. It's a little bit larger on their Titan chuck, but it's not significant. Uh, people, some people think that having a bigger range gives you a wider range of tenon, but the fact of the matter is you should make your tenon uh, very close within a fairly narrow range to fit those chuck jaws for optimum fit. So it's just a question of uh, making an, a go, no-go gauge, understanding what the optimum size is, and cutting your tenon appropriately. It, it's not a big deal. Um, I know there are some people that are just not real careful and they just they make a tenon and then they find the chuck won't fit it uh, and they get frustrated or they have to change to a different set of chuck jaws. But frankly, it's just something on, on what you uh, train yourself to do to make the appropriate size uh, tenon, but but for some people that's a consideration. Let's talk about some of the, the what I call the mainline uh, uh, jaw companies uh, or, or chuck companies, and that would be One Way in Canada. It would be Technitool out of New Zealand, although the the uh, Technitool chucks themselves are made in China. In a in a Techna tool factory where they control that full operation, they control the design, they control the employees, they control the quality control. So uh, the fact it's made in China is not necessarily a big cons uh, consideration. One way on the other hand uh, are the chucks are made in Canada. Uh, easy wood chucks uh, that 
that's the one that has the quick change jaws. Very fine, finely engineered chuck, high quality standards made in the United States. And, and then the third one that generally comes to mind when you're talking about first tier chucks are the Vic Marks made uh, in Australia. Very fine chuck, but, but very expensive. You, but like everything else, there's no free lunch. You generally get what you, you pay for. Uh, there's some others that are high quality chucks uh, that you might say might fall in the main line. I'd say the Sorby Patriot chuck is a very high quality chuck. The record power chucks are very high quality chucks. After that you get what I'd call non-main line or I hesitate to use the term second tier because it, it sounds very judgmental and if you have one of these other chucks may, it may service you uh, perfectly well uh, and that could be Bulldog, Barracuda, uh, Grizzly, Hurricane and I don't want to disparage uh, uh, any, any of those chucks. Selecting a chuck is a very, very personal thing. However, what are some of the differences between a mainline chuck and some of the second tier chucks? Well, there are several items. Number one, quality control might be a consideration. The uh, quality of the documentation may be a consideration. The length or quality of the warranty may be a consideration. Uh, generally with these second tier uh, chucks they don't necessarily use the same and I don't want to say all of them, I, I don't want to sweep them all with the same brush they may not use the same quality alloys as the first tier chucks that may not be a factor for the first year or two or three or maybe maybe ten years if you only turn once a, once a weekend on, on pens or small small items but generally speaking the cheaper chucks generally are cheaper for a reason either the quality control, the, manu the uh, documentation, their, uh, their warranty, their service, and sometimes it's the alloys that, and by that, I mean the, the material, the quality of the steel that goes in in, in terms of these gears um, makes, makes a difference. For casual use, not a big thing, but if you use, it, if you use your chuck every day, every week, you spend hours wood turning, over a period of time, I've, I've done a little research, looked at a lot of forums, and generally people that would start off happy with some of these second tier chucks, after five, six, seven years, three years, depending on their use, they find that there's a little more slop, a little more play, uh, they don't hold quite as well, and so that, that is a consideration. Generally, you don't have that issue with the mainline chucks. Mainline chucks, if a part does wear, and need, it, 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 usually you can get a replacement part. An example would be on this Supernova 2 and what they call these pentels. If you're really rough with the uh, chuck key that comes with it and, and which has a ball head, you can wear this out and pretty soon it won't work very well. You can, you can buy replacement parts. They're not terribly inexpensive and, and you can uh, replace them yourself. So that's a consideration. Country of origin, as I mentioned, they, I'm not sure that's a big consideration, but it, it might be. Uh, because where they're made is not as important as the quality of the manufacturing process. Uh, generally, though, we associate uh, China with not necessarily having the same same level, but but that's not always always the case. But we've got chucks made in New Zealand, or I'm sorry, Australia. The Big Mark. We got uh, Robert Sorby manufactured in Sheffield, England. And I want to thank John Gray for pointing out in an earlier video dealing with SKUs. I, I happen to mention that the Robert Sorby Chuck was was made in China. Uh, I, I was mis, uh, mistaken. I'd looked at one very carefully. I just somehow remembered it was made in China, but it's actually made in Sheffield, England. And it, I wasn't disparaging it by saying it was made in China because it, it, in that video I did say it, I felt like the quality of manufacture was very high and actually higher than the Technotool Chucks that I own, even though they're, they're some they're very similar. Uh, cost. Let's talk about cost just briefly. I'm not sure that cost ought to be a consideration. Uh, it, it may be a consideration. shouldn't be a major consideration because, frankly, the difference between the cheap, a new chuck, the cheapest ones and the most expensive, over a period of years is very, very little, especially if the cheaper chuck has got to be, uh, got to be replaced or you're constantly unhappy with, with the particular uh, chuck. So uh, even though a chuck is one of your more expensive turning accessories, it's going to be something that should last you the rest of your rest of your turning turning life or turning career. Okay, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Y'all stay safe. Come back here.